All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's. Today is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, and winter is here, so let's just deal with it. You can tell winter is here when the coat room is completely full of coats. So I have a few announcements today. We have a baptism this morning. Uh, I will be doing communion visits this week. We will be uh, doing some thank, bag, thank bags from Welka Packing. Next Sunday is the Welka Thank Offering Service, as well as the council meeting. Uh, we have an ecumenical worship here at St. Mark's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, so that frees you up to get that turkey going on Wednesday. It'll be at 6.30 Tuesday here. Pastor Janet from the Methodist Church will be preaching. The community Thanksgiving dinner is coming up. Um, the Welka Christmas luncheon at the Hive is coming up. And the Yankton Banquet, December 8th, is coming up as well. So lots of stuff is coming up. Are there any announcements that anyone would like to share? None. So if you're able, please stand for our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you through, with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Oh 
And for our litur liturgy today, if you can turn to page 175 in the front of the hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. protector of all who trust in you. Without you, nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. Our first reading today is from the book of Malachi, chapter 4. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wing. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. The psalm of the day comes from Psalm 98. Please read responsively. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the voice of song. With the trumpets. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell with therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills sing out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. 
Our second reading comes from the second book of Thessalonians, chapter 3. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. They will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds. Do not prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you your words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By endurance you will gain your souls. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Savior, Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. We are entering a time of expectation and anticipation in the church here, all leading up to the birth of Christ. We are waiting for something new to happen, for a world in need of recreation and transformation, for hope to finally change into reality. In other words... We are tired of singing the same old song. But in the meantime, while we are waiting for this recreation, we have these words found in Malachi. The day is coming. 
burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave neither root nor branch. The question Malachi poses not only for ancient Israel but for us today is, why is so life difficult if God is master? Shouldn't Israel and us know there are dire consequences for the community when focus is directed away from God? If one is faithful to God, one's actions benefit the community. If one is not faithful to God, the community suffers. So God gave us these things called commandments to guide us in our relationship with God and with each other. Commandments which benefit life in community. You know, things like don't kill each other. Don't take what's yours. Don't fool around with someone else's partner or spouse. Don't do rotten and selfish things in the name of God. Love God above anything else and everyone else. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You serve God by following these commandments, and you serve God by caring and loving others. So it's logical that if we follow the commandments, love and serve God, love our neighbors, our communities will prosper, right? You serve God by treating your neighbor, known and stranger, with love and justice, You prosper, right? What's the point of serving God, being loyal to God, when those who do not serve and are loyal to God continue to prosper? So where do you place your loyalty? Who do you ultimately end up serving? Yourself? False prophets? You know those tele-evangelists shilling for private jets and mansion money? Political parties and their leaders? God? Are you, are we singing the same old my life is difficult and challenging so where's my prosperity song? So how about this for a new song? One that tells of God's salvation, of rescue, hope, joy, of renewal. We don't need to wait around for that new song either for salvation has already come down to us. It's here. It's now. God's God's righteousness is here with us. But there's a judgment attached to it, a conviction. But have no fear, though. Psalm 98 that we read earlier says this. There is hope in God's righteous judgment of the world. There is no fear or dread for those who serve God and their fellow human beings. And I hear God's righteous judgment sounding something like this. I can't do my Charlton Heston voice, so you'll just have to bear with me. Oh, humanity, my beloved creation, I love you deeply, but you've created a mess out of your lives. This is not what I've intended for you. I've given you my commandments shown you how to live in a peaceful and loving community with me and with each other, and you failed miserably. All the hate and betrayal, self-centeredness and greed, violence and war, mistrust, racism, sexism, bias. So I will come down myself and be your salvation. And it's not just for a few, it's for everyone. Because I am the Lord, your God. So by delivering us from our messed up lives, all people from all nations are called to join in singing a new song of praises to the God of salvation. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills ring out. Because God judges the world with righteousness and equity, we are saved. Not because we deserve it. We don't. We're saved because we're loved. We are loved. I am loved. You are loved. We came here this morning to receive God's righteousness, love, and salvation. It's what we Lutherans love to call grace. 
And it began when we publicly, publicly confessed to God that we have turned from God and gave into the power of sin. And God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, made us alive together with Christ. And by grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Now, there's more righteousness, love, and salvation, more unending grace to be had today. We have Chloe Grace's baptism, don't we? Through water and the word, Chloe will receive God's grace. And isn't it appropriate that her middle name is Grace? She will be made one with us in the body of Christ, be sealed with the Holy Spirit, and marked with the cross of Christ forever. God adopts her as a beloved daughter in whom he is well pleased. And we also remember our own baptism when we received and continue to receive deliverance from evil and be reborn daily through forgiveness. Yes, we will, won't we? But we also pledge to support and pray for our new sister in Christ. And if you thought that was it, we have the Lord's table where all are invited to come and receive the body and blood of Christ. Come with joy to taste and see God's saving righteousness. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, God fills us with Christ's heavenly blessing and grace. And we are formed to live together as God's holy people. And finally, we get to take that God-given grace out there. We don't keep it for ourselves. We go out and we love our neighbors, especially the ones we don't like. I had a pastor say that you don't have to like them, but you got to love them. Yes. Shelby's listening, right? And that one, too. See, adults, we can learn from the, from the babes in the congregation. So we don't get to keep this grace for ourselves. We go out and love our neighbors. We love the ones who are shunned, the ones who look, speak, love, vote differently from us. So go out and sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. So, Chloe, you ready to get baptized? I'm ready. So, if parents and sponsors can come up, I'll have you stand on this side. And kids, if you can come up, where's my water pourer? Do you want to pour water again? Okay. So, sponsors can stand over here. Kids, you can gather and sit down front. And then I have, and he knocks over the water. Did I put, ah, here they are. That's for you to follow along. You can share. Actually, you know what? Now, I need someone to hold this oil for me and give it to me. Okay. You can hold the oil. Someone needs to hold the candle for me. Who wants to hold the candle? Okay. And then one more thing. Who wants to hold the napkin for me? You're already holding one. <laughs> He's ready for grace, I can tell. There. And I will let you know when to pour the water, okay? And congregation, if you can turn into your hymnals to pay... Two twenty seven. I'm glad someone's paying attention. Two twenty seven for the um, order of baptism. Oh, I know why. I had the wrong service in here. No, I'm good, thank you. Are we all ready? Am I ready? Yes, I'm ready. So God who is rich in mercy and love gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Christ. 
And we are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for life in the world. So Ty and Katie, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Chloe baptized into Christ? We do. As you bring Chloe to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer so that Chloe may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Chloe grow in the Christian faith and life? We do. Sponsors. Do you promise to nurture Chloe in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help, help, them, help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? We do. Congregation, now it's your turn. People of God, do you promise to support Chloe and pray for her in her new life in Christ? Congregation, please stand if you are able. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Hold it up and just make a mess. There you go. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise, up, raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, so that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Let's do it. Chloe Grace, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Who's got the napkin? Okay, here. You did a nice job. You want to see too? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain, Chloe, with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, 
and spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Now, who's got the oil? See if I can do this now. Chloe, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Now, who's got the candle? Yay! Can you light this for me, Missy? Thank you. And with the candle that you receive, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, I'm going to trust you with fire, but blow it out before you sit down, please. (laughs) Congregation, please stand if you are able. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Welcome, Chloe. You may go back to your seats. And then we can join in the baptism hymn. He's got the whole world. That's yours as well. And then that's the box for it. Thank you. And the napkin is yours as well, but the oil's mine. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little tiny baby in his hands he's got the little little baby in his hands he's got the tiny little baby in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got you and me brother in his hands he's got you and me sister in his hands he's got everybody here in his hands Time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, Make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are in need of your care, especially Vicki Achenbach, Vicki, Ruth Ann Grimm, Ruth Ann, Jean Schroeder. Jean, Beth McApring, Beth, Ken Carlo, Ken, Patrick Kester, Patrick, Lou Nelson, Lou, Sandy Miller, 
Sandy. Barb Schlody. Barb. Creating God, you give us the gift of life. Be with those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Matt Dorr, Matt. Calvin Dather, Calvin. Angie Gunther, Angie. Peggy Schrader, Peggy. Tyler Teeley, Tyler. Abby Folk, Abby. And Becky Milliken. Becky. May you walk with them on their life's journey. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Share a sign of peace with those around you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, God of might and power, holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of might and power, holy is the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna here on earth. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna here on earth. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, mighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And we give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in, in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you to mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, 
and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. And know that all are invited to the table here at St. Mark's. We have bread, we also have gluten-free, and in the middle is uh, grape juice. You may be seated. Body of Christ given for you. 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 Blood of Christ shed 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 for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
please rise. Now may the biting blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Christ Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God.